Hello everybody and welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday, August the 7th and time once again for the mailbag. That's right. How about that? I managed to get a mailbag up for you guys today. You know my little trick, my little workaround. I'm, I'm actually recording this on the evening of August the 2nd, Wednesday. Uh, it just so happens that uh, by midweek I had gotten half a dozen packages in the mail. That's enough for a whole episode of the mailbag, so I thought, why not go ahead and do this one early? And uh, by the time most of you are watching this, I'm going to say that I'm going to be on a Finnair A330 over the North Atlantic on my way to Helsinki. I am super excited. I'm going to get to meet uh, some lovely booktubers like Elizabeth and... Caitlin and Bree and Maya and a bunch of other folks and I'm just gonna I'm gonna go to Helsinki for Wolcon. Never been. Never been to Finland before. When I was very young, like very young, you know, this sized. Um, well, not this small. Maybe. Anyway, young. That's the key word. Uh, we lived in England and so during that time we vacationed all through Europe. Uh, but never went to the Scandinavian countries and so so I'm very excited anyway but uh, let's go ahead and uh, get into these books and see what we have okay so this week looks like it's kind of evenly matched between Tor stuff and Harper Collins stuff so this first one is a Harper package well we're starting off kind of strong uh, this time uh, this one comes in from uh, William Morrow actually which is a Harper imprint, and it's from Joe Hill. It's called Strange Weather and uh, comes out October 24th. And it looks like Joe is following in Dad's footsteps. Uh, this is a compilation, a collection of four short novels. So a lot like Different Seasons and Four Past Midnight, how Stephen King has done those little four short novel collections throughout his career. This is Joe Hill's. And uh, uh, let's see, it's, uh, the stories in it are Snapshot, tells the story of a Silicon Valley adolescent who finds himself threatened by the Phoenician, a tattooed thug who possesses a Polaroid instant camera that erases memories snap by snap. Hmm. In Aloft, a young man takes to the skies to experience parachuting for the first time and winds up a castaway on an impossibly solid cloud, a prosperous island of roiling vapor that seems animated by a mind of its own. Well, I like the sound of that one. Uh, next up, one day in Boulder, Colorado, the clouds open up in a downpour of nails, splinters of bright crystal that tear apart anyone who isn't safely undercover. Rain, that's the name of the story, explores this escalating apocalyptic event as the deluge of nails spreads out across the country and around the world. And finally, in Loaded, a mall security guard heroically stops a mass shooting and becomes a hero to the modern gun rights movement. Under the glare of the spotlights, though, his story begins to unravel, taking his sanity with it. As an out-of-control summer blaze approaches his coastal Florida town, he reaches for the gun again and sets out upon a last day of reckoning. Oh my. Okay. Well, I've, uh, I mean, I've already done my, I think I've put together my Halloween slate uh, for this year, but uh, I, I may have to find a way to work this in at some point even if it's not part of that. But Strange Weather from Joe Hill, four short novels, comes out, like I said, October 24th. And this next one is in from Saga, and it's an arc for Dark Deeds. It's the third in the Keiko trilogy, or I assume it's a trilogy. Maybe it's a series, maybe it's more than a trilogy. But this is by Mike Brooks. And uh, anyway, it says, in the third book of what Kirkus Reviews calls the entertaining Keiko series... Uh, Captain Ichabod Adrift and his crew find themselves in another mess as a shipwide vacation leads to their second-in-command being taken hostage by the planet's criminal mastermind. So uh, these sound a, a bit on the lighthearted side, but uh, anyway, Dark Deeds uh, from Mike Brooks uh, arrives on October the 10th from Saga Press. See, Publishers Weekly says it's outrageously ballsy chicanery. <laughs> okay. That's a, that's a prime pull quote, if I ever saw one. And next up, it is another Harper package. And this is The Rift Frequency, book two of the Rift Uprising trilogy by Amy Foster. Remember a couple of weeks ago, the Rift Uprising, where apparently we found out that 17-year-old uh, girls flirt with every person on the face of the earth. 
I'm sorry. I don't know why I fixated on that. It was just a hilarious thing that just popped up at random in the cell sheet. And he was, he's like, I read it and it's like, huh? Okay. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, this is the Rift Frequency. Okay. Uh, and it comes out October 31st. And uh, anyway, let's see. Gosh, what can I say? The Rifts are a series of 14 mysterious portals that lead to alternative Earths, the multiverse. Rin is tasked with using her innate combat skills to guard and fight whatever materializes out of the Rift, be they mutants or advanced humanoids. When Ezra Massad appears, he turns her assumptions upside down, questioning the Rifts themselves and the Runes, advanced humanoids who have also come through the portals. Ren and Ezra are pivotal in starting a coup. In the ensuing fray, he vanishes back into the Rift. Ren launches a plan to rescue him, but he could be anywhere in the world or on millions of worlds. Okay. So she is very action-packed, and it could be quite an exciting trilogy, you know, cell sheets notwithstanding. Um, but anyway, yeah, okay, Amy, Amy Foster, a second in her trilogy, and like I said, comes out October the 31st. Not 1st, 31st. 31st. So let me know in the comments. And this one is a box. Sturdy box with a hardcover in it from a random penguin. I'm going to guess this will be a Delray thing. I was correct. This is a Delray hardcover. It's the finished copy of After On. The author is Rob Reed, and this actually came out on the 1st of August. So yesterday to me and a week ago to you. Uh, but let's have a look. Isn't this the one about the um, intelligent social network? That can oh, here it is. Yeah. Uh, Meet Flutter. P-H-L-U-T-T-R, a diabolically addictive new social network, and a villainess, heroine, enemy, and or bestie to millions. Flutter has ingested every fact and message ever sent to, from, or about her innumerable users. Her capabilities astound her makers, and they don't even know the tenth of it. But what's the purpose of this stunning creation? Is it a front for something even darker and more powerful than the NSA? A bid to create a trillion dollar market by becoming the Uber X of sex? or a reckless experiment that could spawn the digital equivalent of a middle school mean girl with enough charisma, dirt, and cunning to bend the entire planet to her will. Oh my. Flutter has it in her to become the greatest gossip, flirt, or matchmaker in history. Or she could cure cancer, bring back Seinfeld, then start a nuclear war. Whatever she does, it's not up to us. But a motley band of Silicon Valley entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and engineers might be able to influence her. After On achieves the literary singularity, f fusing speculative satire and astonishing reality into a sharp-witted, ferociously believable, IMAX-wide view of our digital age. You know, there was just, I think, this week or last week, an article that um, had to do with... It might have been Facebook. Anyway, there was this AI uh, that, that they were working on, and they had to shut it down because it invented its own language and nobody could communicate with it, and had no idea what it was trying to say or thinking about. So they thought, let's err on the side of caution with this. So it all does just seem kind of timely here, doesn't it? But anyway, yeah, After On is now available in hardcover from Delray Books. And going down the list, we have White Envelope. White Envelope usually, but not always. Then it's a Tor title. It is. This is Assassin's Price by Ellie Modessit Jr., the ridiculously prolific Ellie Modessit Jr. And this is the 11th novel in the Imager Portfolio series. 11 books in, and I'm just sitting here like Spider-Man. <laughs> but anyway, it says it's set in a world where magic is the literal realization of the imagination. This novel continues the latest story arc in the Imager portfolio that began with last year's Treachery's Tools. Okay, so I can't really give any plot synopsis because we're 11 books into this thing. But it does have to do with magic expressed through art and creativity, as I understand it. Apparently now this series is going on and uh, just uh, spreading across generations in this universe. So I would like to, you know, read these. I mean, I'm not just, just being a slacker. I'd like to do it. But uh, in any event, this, this came out, this has been out, came out in hardcover on the 25th from Tor, July 25th. So it's now available. And last, but by no means least, also from Tor, this is The Dinosaur Princess by Victor Milan. This is the third book in the uh, Dinosaur uh, Lords series, or truly. It's saying series, so it may be a trilogy, may not be, but this is the third one either way. And this one comes out on August the 15th. Um, anyway, in The Dinosaur Princess, readers are plunged back into a rollicking alternative world of a 14th century Europe that never was. 
uh, you know, knights riding dinosaurs, as it were, and doing battle. I have heard, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, very mixed things about these books, but in any event, if you would like for me to read them and review them and let you know what I think, just let me know in the comments. But this one will be out from Tor on August the 15th. And that is it! That is the three-day mailbag <laughs> for this week. You guys know the drill. Let me know which of these looks the most interesting and exciting to you, which you would like to see me prioritize for review. Otherwise, please like if you enjoyed watching, share the video far and wide, and sub if you have not done so. That's how SFF 180 grows as a channel. You can also support the channel at its Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where my recruits in Wink's army get to watch my mailbags a day early and I really, really appreciate their extra support. If you would like to become one of them, click the uh, linky. Uh, please do. Uh, otherwise, thank you all so much for being wonderful viewers. And uh, yeah, look forward to uh, more content, more reviews, more discussion. Obviously, my Worldcon vlogs are going to be coming. The mailbag won't return until Monday after next. So not the 14th, but the 21st, I believe. So look for the mailbag then, but look for more content, like I said, to keep the channel ticking over. All right. And thanks once again. And until I see you next time, happy reading.